say there's nobody like home, like here in the feast. And I'd like you to greet the person beside you. Say to that person, welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Yeah. Thank you for being here. I want to give a shout out to our first timers in the house. If it's your first time, please raise your hand. Sunday and I want to speak to those people who are watching via the TV or internet welcome home and I hope that God's blessings here will also go to your life in a very happy spiritual way Woo! who's ready for the feast who's ready for the word of God today is our third installment of our series called perfect 10 and we've been talking about the 10 commandments of God and we've we're done with our first to seventh commandment, and we're gonna talk about now the, the eight, nine, and ten. And let, let us review what are those commandments. Commandment number eight is this. If you if we can show it now, everybody could listen, could see it. Commandment number eight is: You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Nine. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Ten. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods. You know, in knowing and following God's commandments. Uh, we've been trying to rely on our guts, on our willpower. But today, I want to encourage you, don't rely on your guts, rely on His grace. If His grace is with us, we can follow, we can prosper through these commandments. And, and with grace, we're not afraid of the commandments. It's not out of fear, but out of love. And we need His grace today. Who's, who needs God's grace today? Raise your hand. Yeah. Let's pray our favorite prayer here in the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Stretch out your arms out wide, ready for His grace. Receive His grace. Receive His, receive His love today. As together, we declare, today, I receive all of God's love for me. Come on. Today, I open myself to the arm of God's universe. Today, I to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so I become more like Jesus every day. Proclaim this. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody sing to God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Speak to us, Lord. Here's the word of God from Genesis 5, verse 1 to 2. When God created mankind, He made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. I have a message for you, my dear friends. You look like God. You're not sure. <laughs> Can you say to the person beside you, affirm that person, you look like God. <laughs> you look like God. Some people are surprised. According to this passage, we are created in the image and likeness of God. You look like God. Why? Because God decided to make you like Himself. Think of a copying machine. You know, you are the product of that machine, of, of God, and God is the original template. God is the original mold, and, and, and God is saying to you, you are like Him. You are like Him. So never say again that I am not beautiful, I am not handsome. I tell you, you are beautiful, you are handsome. You are amazing just the way you are. Let me remind you of God's word from Psalm 139 verse 14. It says, I praise you because you, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works, like me, are wonderful. And I know that fully well. Sometimes we just forget. Sometimes people label us as ugly, as stupid. So we think less of ourselves. But let me remind you, 
you are God's creation. And I, I love what this song said. When I see your face, there's not a thing that I would change. Because you're amazing just the way you are. If you know this song, say it to the person beside you. And when you smile, you the whole world stops and stares for a while. Because you're amazing just the way you are. You're amazing. You're amazing just the way you are. So starting today, you never say, I'm a bad person. No, I'm a bad person. I don't deserve this love. I'm a bad person. Hey, you may have done bad things. You may have done things that are, 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 are really looked down upon, but you probably got into the wrong people, wrong habits. You learned from them wrong stuff. But deep within you, the original template that God has put in you is you are good. You are God and nothing can take that away from you because you are God. You are God's child. You are as good as God who made you. And here's my message for you. You are greater than you think you are. You are greater than you think you are. You are better than you think you are. You are wiser than you think you are. You are kinder than you think you are. You are holier than you think you are. Remember today that you're made in the image and likeness of God. You are greater than you think you are. Put your hands to your heart. Close your eyes if you will. Listen to God's voice to you. You are greater than you think you are. When I see your face, there's not a thing that I will change. My child, you are amazing, just the way you are. And when you smile, the heavens stop and stares for a while. My child, you are amazing, just the way you are. Say this prayer with me, dear Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for creating me to be like you. Speak to me today. Renew my mind. Touch my heart. Use my hands. Have your way in me today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Love the Lord today. Give a big hand to Dido and thank you, Dido, for that word. Thank you, worship team. Please be seated, everybody. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. And if you're beside a woman, tell that person, hello, gorgeous. And if there's a guy beside you, tell that guy, hello, guy. No, no, no. Hello, guapo. We're at the very end of our series now on Perfect 10 and commandment number 8, 9, and 10. That's what we're going to talk about today. Are you ready? May God's word bless your life. Commandment number 8, do not bear false witness. Everybody say that with me. Do not bear false witness. When I was a kid, I did not pay too much attention to this command. It, I kind of like skipped it because, you know, I was thinking, you know, this is about stuff about courts like you're, you're supposed to be a witness in court and you're, you're you know <laughs> that's what i thought and then later on as i grew up i realized this commandment is all about all about communication speaking and and it's really about any time you open your mouth 
Now, if you've been living on planet Earth for quite some time, you know that God did not create people equal when it comes to opening their mouth. Some people open their mouth more than others. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So, there, 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 are, there are people here who have been blessed by that gift. And, yeah, some people are looking at their seatmate now. <laughs> but here's, here's a scripture I'd, I'd like to share with you. Uh, from the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 19, it says, Don't talk, let's read together. Don't talk, read together. Don't talk so much. You keep putting your foot in your mouth. Be sensible and turn off the flow. I want you to punch a button in the shoulder and say, turn off the flow. There are three ways by which uh, we can go deeper in this commandment. Tell the truth, spread the truth, and live the truth. Number one is tell the truth. So what do we mean by telling the truth? You know, have you ever ever, even once in your lifetime, told a lie? Raise your hand if you have. Okay. The person beside you that did not raise their hand is lying. <laughs> but when you made that lie, how did you feel? You felt crummy. You felt there was something wrong. You felt discombobulated. You felt that there was something amiss. I'm not talking about people who would lie and lie and lie and then their conscience is seared so much that they now believe in their own lies, which is very, very dangerous. No, I'm talking about normal people. You know, that when you lie, you know that you've told a lie. And the reason being is this, you're made in the image and likeness of God. Jesus said, John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God is truth. You're made in His image, Didoy said, you know, a while ago. You're made in His image. And so therefore, you live in truth. You want to be in truth. There is something in you that desires truth. There is something in you that wants to be in the truth. Am I speaking to somebody here? And so because of that, when you lie, you know there's something wrong. There's something wrong. I, I remember, I love telling this story about, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I remember telling a lie, uh, and, and I felt so bad about it. I was, I was in this, I was in the classroom, and I was going out, and, no, no, was I going out or going in? Going out or, I forgot. Anyway, I, I, I was, I was holding the door, and then I, I went, I, I opened the door, didn't know my classmate was right behind it. And the door hit him here in, in the soft flesh of his, of, of, of his forehead. And it started bleeding. And he said, oops. And then, and then the teacher comes out. The teacher sees me. The teacher sees the whole commotion. And, and she sees this bloody classmate of mine. And the teacher said, who did this? And I was holding the, the, the doorknob, right? And I said, not me. <laughs> So anyway, uh, of course they knew it was me. But, but in the evening, you know, like, like before going to bed, I usually say my, my prayers as a small boy. I, I, I felt so bad. I said, why did I lie? You know, I'm, this, this is not me. And every time you lie, something in you is rebelling and saying, this is not you. Because we want to be in the truth. Number two, spread the truth. Everybody say that with me. There is a difference between accuracy and truth. Yes or no? If you, you know, let's say your, your wife gained 10 pounds. If you say you're fat, that may be accurate. But that may not be the truth. Why tell her you're fat? She already knows. <laughs> she feels so bad about it already. 
Why not tell her the truth and say, I love you yesterday. I love you today. I love you tomorrow. And you will always be the most beautiful person in the world for me. That's the truth. Go, go ahead, go ahead, clap. <laughs> Meaning to say, when every time you open your mouth, you have to spread the truth. You know, it's, it's, it's accurate. Yeah, she gained 10 pounds, but why? Ask yourself this question every time you open your mouth. Am I building up or tearing down? When you ask that question, because the truth wants to build up. Let's, let's go to Ephesians this time. Chapter 4, verse 29. Let's read together. Everybody. Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words. Can you touch a body in the arm and say, only use helpful words? <laughs> The kind that build up and provide what is needed. So that what you say, everybody say, what you say will do good to those who hear you. Say amen. amen. It is because of this that you want to stop slander. Everybody say stop slander. stop slander. Meaning to say you do not want to speak about the weakness or the ills or the negative qualities of another person if there is no purpose. You know, sometimes we have this temptation, you know, just to talk about someone else and, and the negative qualities of that other person. Why? Well, it's just because I can, you know? No, build up, do, do not tear down. The other reason, of course, is that you're not sure. Everybody say, I'm not sure. In Matthew chapter seven, verse one, it says, judge not that you be not judge. I'm not making sense to you. So here's my rule. Everybody say, this will be my rule. I want you, I want you again to hold someone's hand, please. This is very important. Squeeze that person until blood spurts out. Come on. And then tell that person, if you have nothing good to say, be quiet. In other words, tell somebody beside you, turn off the flow. <laughs> because you want to be, you know what? Listen to me. It might actually be accurate. Whatever negative qualities you will talk about your neighbor, about your office mate, or about your, it might be accurate. But it's not the truth. That that little detail, that negative quality of that person does not encompass the whole human being, that that human being so much more than whatever negative quality you will spread and gossip about. Am I speaking to somebody in this room? And so that's what commandment number eight is all about. Isn't it wonderful? And then finally, live the truth. Everybody say, live the truth. Live the, tr live the truth is understanding that your actions speak louder than your words. And, and sometimes what, when, when, you, when you say, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm serving God, or I'm, I go to church, you know, that's, those are statements. But is, is your actions, do they connect and link with your words? So living the truth is very, very important. Um, I, I remember I was walking in a mall and this woman came up to me asking for prayer. And then and she, she just was crying. And, and she told me, her, uh, she told me, Brother Bo, my husband, um, he goes to church, he's a lay minister, but, but he's having an affair. And, and so that, that's what I mean. You know, living the truth is part of this commandment um, on bearing false witness. Can we, can we move now to commandment number 9 and 10? Let's read together. Commandment number 9 and 10. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife and goods that that's I'm, I'm combining commandment number nine and ten this is about envy and envy for me is the hidden disease everybody say the hidden disease it is hidden because you have it and yet many people don't know they have it many many don't many people will not accept that i'm envious and they they don't go that far they just know that they really dislike this person that has it all together. 
They're very, they, they notice that they're very competitive with a very successful person. And, and when that person fails, they feel this little feeling of joy. They begin to gloat. Like, in Tagalog, if, if I'm, I'm sorry for non-Filipinos listening to me right now, but let me just, I'll translate, try to translate later. But in Tagalog, we say, Buting sa you. Yabang kasi. How do you say that in English? Good for you. Never mind. Okay. Envy appears when we use others as our measuring stick. That's what happens. And so, I'd like to move this to a close. I want to kind of like bring the whole series of Perfect Ten going through all the commandments. And I want to ask this question. Why do we sin? Everybody say that with me. Why do we sin? And, and a lot of religious leaders will tell you, oh, because we're disobedient. That's why. You know, we're bad people. And I'm going to give you this word, and I, I want to, I pray that this word will speak to your heart. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. I want you to touch somebody in the shoulder and say, this is big. From my experience of 37 years in ministry, from my personal experience of falling into sin, for some people, for some people, sin doesn't come from a God rebellion, but self-hatred. When, when people sin, it's not because they're rebelling against God and they hate God and, and, and they're so angry at God that they want to smite Him. No, no, no. I, I, most of the time, everybody say most of the time. That there might be people who are like that, but, but I'm saying that for most people, People sin because of self-hatred. People sin because they don't like themselves. And because they don't like themselves, they throw themselves in the mud that they believe they belong to. They feel inferior. Inferiority eats them up. They, they, feel, that, they feel that because they're broken, might as well act broken. That's, that, that was my experience. I, I was addicted to porn for 20 years. And I know that feeling of falling into sin and, and, and coming crying out to God for help. But because I felt that I was so broken, I might as well act like a broken person because I didn't like myself. And all along it was a, it was a refrain, constant refrain. And if right now you're listening to me and you're falling into sin and you, it's, it's as though you cannot control yourself, you're very impatient and you've been trying to control your temper or, or, or you, you're, you're falling into envy or you're falling into lust or you're falling, you know, what, whatever sin you're falling into, here's my, here's my, my, my word for you. Um, can I tell you a story? Can I? Okay. One day there was this little boy. His name... He didn't like his name. His name was Robert Bajo. He didn't like to go to school because of that reason. Especially roll call. Roll call where the teacher calls out names. and Every time the teacher says, Robert Bajo, everybody will laugh. And, and all the classmates will jeer and ridicule and insult him. Everywhere he goes, Bajo, 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 Bajo. And so, when he was studying in grade school and high school, he had a resolution in his mind. He was going to change his name. And then he went to work and he had a job. And then he met a lawyer, attorney Roger Reyes. Oh, you know, and, and when, when Robert uh, Bavo, you know, talked to this attorney, he said, attorney, you've got such a beautiful name, simple, common, you know, Roger Reyes. My name is terrible, you know? And then, the, you know, the, the lawyer said, it's easy to change names today. I can go to court and change your name. Really? Wow, thank you so much. 
What, what, what name do you want? Oh, I, I like your name. It's, it's so nice. Can, can you, can I borrow your name? And I said, okay. So after a few days, the authority goes to, to Robert and says, carrying the legal document, you know, it's done. You have a new name. And, 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 and Robert, you know, read the document. It said, Robert Bao shall now be called Roger Bao. Not too long after that, Robert went to the States, migrated to the States, and overnight, his most pernicious problem was solved. Why? Because in the States, no one knew the name, no one knew the meaning of the name, and everybody there called him Beho. <laughs> Robert Beho. <laughs> Classy. You see, the problem was not his name. The problem was the meaning of his name that was in his mind and the people around him. But the moment he changed that, and even the people around him didn't know that meaning anyway. You know what? His problem was solved. I, I, I want to share with you that when I, was, when I was locked into my sins and my addictions, I had the same problem. You see, my name was not the problem. It was the meaning of my name that was the problem. For me, Bo meant molested. Bo meant addicted. Bo meant broken and bruised. And, and then God came into my life. And God told me that He loved me. And God told me, no, I'm changing the meaning of your name. And all of a sudden, because of God's love, intense, permanent, eternal love, Bo no longer meant molested. Bo meant magnificent. Bo no longer meant addicted. Bo meant anointed. Bo no longer meant broken and bruised. No, Bo meant blessed and beautiful and beloved. Bo meant empowered. Bo meant a lover. And, and this, is, this, is the, this is what God is going to do. God is doing in your life and what God will continue to do in your life. He wants you to migrate into His heart. To migrate into a heart. You see, perhaps right now you're surrounded by people who look down at you. And God says, no, my, come migrate to my heart and listen to what I tell you. Who you are according to what I want you to be. Let's all stand. I want to just uh, say one last thing. <coughs> You know, in a carnival, in a, in a theme park, before you ride a roller coaster, they usually have things like these, where, where you, uh, you've, you've got to reach a certain height to ride a roller coaster. Yes or no? And I remember I'd bring my kids, I'd bring Francis. I remember Francis would, would, would not reach the height required. And he loves roller coasters, right? So, so when, when those moments when, when he would try to ride the roller coaster and then he would only be here or he would be here or he would just be a few inches away, you know, he'd, he'd, be, he'd be so frustrated. You know, why can't I, you know, can I, can I just tiptoe and can I just reach? And, and the reason why I, I, we, we made this is because this is the feeling of a lot of people They're trying to live up to a certain imagined standard. A certain imagined standard of, of perfection. That I have to be this. I have to be better. I have to be as... <laughs> Just a few inches. You... you 
I hear this all the time. I hear this all the time. I'm telling you, I'm not good enough. I'm not holy enough. I'm not patient enough. I'm not disciplined enough. And then of course the others, people are insecure about their looks. I'm not tall enough. I'm not sexy enough. I'm not, you know. And then those who are insecure with their with other things like I'm not talented enough, I'm not intelligent enough. And so you, you keep on looking down at yourself and, and, and you look at, because, because you look down at yourself, you begin to not like yourself, then you're weaker to, towards temptations because, oh, might as well act this way. Why? Oh, I'm a terrible person. Are you listening to me? If there's one gift that God wants to give to you today here at the feast, is to let you know that you're greater than you think you are. You're better than you think you are. The, the problem with this, in our, this, this is a rigged game. Everybody say, it's rigged. Because this thing, it goes higher and taller and taller. You thought you already made it, and then all of a sudden, your imagination, it goes taller and higher. The world will say, oh, it's not yet enough. Oh, it's not yet enough. I know you're getting better, but it's not yet enough. You know, it, it's, it's terrible. You'll always lose this self-imposed game. I'm giving you God's word. God is saying, no. You're greater than who you think you are. You're better than you think you are. You're amazing. You're made in my image and likeness. Away with that. You can ride a roller coaster. You're, you're, you're mine. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Lido is going to come here. C can we all sit down again? Mm. Everybody say, change the label. In my medical practice, um, I see people with chronic diseases like hypertension, diabetes. And the first thing we do in my sessions with them is to change the label. Change their labels. Change the label. Meaning, people would be branding them as diabetic. And they're going to be thinking, I'm going to be sick for life. I'm going to take medications for life. And there's no way out of this one. Once we change the label from being diabetic to someone who has high blood sugar. That's a totally different thing. Person with hypertension. I am hypertensive. I'm always, uh, I'm always gonna be at risk for heart disease, for heart attack, and for big problems. From being hypertensive, we change the label from being person with high blood sugar. Why? Because I believe that whatever is high could be could be brought down. Whatever level is so high, it could be brought down. I believe that your body is magnificently created by God, that you have the power to heal yourself. And the mind is so much powerful than the body. And if you heal the mind, the, the body will follow. And, and when people realize that I'm not going to be sick for life, I just have high blood sugar, then I take care of my nutrition. I take care of my sleep. And then real change happens. Real healing happens. Here's what I realized. When the labels changed, the levels changed too. There is always hope. Can you say that to the person beside you? There's always hope. You know, you know so, some people would come to me, they, they say, oh, I have cancer, I'm a cancer fighter. You know, I up it up, meaning don't just call yourself as a fighter, you are a warrior. And, and don't call yourself as a cancer survivor, you are a cancer victor. There's a big change. If you focus on the mess of the disease, if you focus on the mess of your life, no. Rather, change the label. Focus on the message of the disease. Focus on the message of what's happening to your life. From being so stressed about everything, being so stressed about something, to feeling and thinking on a different perspective and feeling so blessed. Uh, this is opportunity for growth. This is opportunity for a new beginning. This was what I, recall, I discovered. When there is a change in perspective, everybody say perspective. Amazing healing and recovery happens. And, and I believe that you are, we are greater than we think we are. And when you change your labels, you change your life. 
change your labels, you change your life. My friend, I want to speak to you. Change your label from being a sinner to saint. You may have done bad, bad things, but that's not you. That's not you. God does not see you as a sinner. God sees, sees you as a saint. Receive His love today. Remember who you really are. You are made in God's image and likeness. Claim your identity. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Tap the person beside you. Say it lovingly. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. And now we're going to do a change the label activity. If you'll see in your bulletins, you have something like this. You have a card. And if you don't have one, raise your hands. We're going to distribute it for you. You see something small as this one. I want you to get that card. And what I want you to do is to change your labels. Write your name on those cards. For example, it says blank means anointed your name means anointed your name means generous your name means inspiring you means your name means empowered your name your name means amazing your name means love your name means bless and continue on you still have a few plans there i ask you to continue on change your labels go back to who you really are and write it down go ahead and as you do that, as you do that, we're going to be singing a song. And I pray that this becomes God's song for you as you do your activity and listen also to the song. Change your label. Go back to your original form. You are a child of God. God bless you.